Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the fish room. Today's video is tank number five of the 43 tank series. We have a 10 gallon behind us with some yellow half black Delta guppies. Also have a small group of super red plecos that I'm growing out. And above the tank, I have some germ blue ram containers where I'm growing fry. So that's kind of like a little bonus to it. They're right above the tank, so I'm gonna add those in this video, part of the series. So we'll take a close look at those. Um, before I do that, I forgot to point out, I'm wearing my new Bianco School Fish t-shirt. Just got these in today, I'm kind of excited about it. I have a website, if you guys aren't following my page, um, especially if you like some of the content, go ahead, subscribe, like the video, I'd appreciate it. But I've talked about it briefly before, but if you go in the description below, right down there, I have a link to my website, biancosfish.com. Um, I have fish for sale. I do an aquarium fish tank service in the Pittsburgh, PA area. So if you guys want to check that out, go ahead. I'd appreciate it. Uh, give me some feedback. It's in early stages, but we'll talk more about that later. Let's get to the fish. Here's the tank gun aquarium. It's on the same stand as the previous tanks number three and four on the black wrought iron stands. Um, in here, there's not a whole lot going on, but it's pretty exciting stuff. So I have some yellow, half black, maybe two to three month old fry. I'm uh, not even fry anymore at this point. So you can see I have some males here. Their tails are growing out. Um, they've started to uh, take shape, get some color to them. Uh, you can see the females are probably starting to breed a little bit. So they're starting to get their bellies on them. They're still young. These guys, actually I'll tell you exactly how old they are. They were born on 9-5, so today is 11-1. They are about two months old, yeah. So I was right in saying that. They actually look a little bigger than I expect. At three months old, they're pretty much ready to start breeding. They really look like uh, full adults at that age. But at two months, I believe they can start breeding. So if I did not want any of these fish to breed with each other, uh, I should have separated them before now. But you can see they're all schooling up pretty well for us. Um, sorry for the glare. But I think we have, let's see, four, eight, 12. It's probably about 14 to 15 fish in this tank. So not a huge um, drop of fry, but still, I mean, they're schooling up for me. I'm not really sure why they're, they like the camera. They're schooling up really nice right now. I probably have a good split of males to females, maybe a couple more males. But these guys are doing really well. My yellow half black strain has been struggling, so I've been spreading out my pregnant females to empty aquariums, which is what I did here. I put a female in here by herself. She had some fry. I removed her shortly after. Um, I didn't do it the, exactly on the same day. I think I let her go for about a week, so she didn't really... Uh, prey on many of the fry but she's out of here now and I have a really nice consistent growth of these yellow half black guppies so if you guys like the yellow half blacks they're one of my favorite strains I do have them available now on my website you can go check that out but they're doing pretty good and to add to this tank I put half a dozen super red bristlenose plecos so there was a lot more algae in this aquarium the bottom has some uh, Food and a little bit of algae but these walls were all covered in algae about a week or two ago and they've all been cleaned up by these plecos so it's hard to see they're all kind of hiding right now there's one under the sponge filter this guy's uh, feeding on some algae wafers it's not super colorful right now they're actually pretty nice orangish red color so I'm not sure I just put this flashlight in the tank to kind of help for the video that may be affecting their color and let's see if we can find any more I think they're under the sponge filter and I might go ahead and lift that up and get a better look. But you guys can see those, uh, they're getting to grow out separately. It's really important to spread your uh, babies out if you have multiple aquariums and you want them to grow faster and kind of reinsure that if anything happens to uh, one tank, you still have some uh, backups. So that's why I'm doing that. Here's another shot just a little bit further back. So I'm, I don't know how to go too in depth about these guppies. They're two months old, they're doing really well. Uh, I just wanted to show them, this is tank number five, but it doesn't have to be a real long video. I want to show you these guys. Let's go ahead and look above at the German Blue Rams. 
Up here I have three containers of different age German Blue Rams. I get asked this a lot of times how I'm doing this and it's pretty simple. So let's look at the first container. And these are all due to be cleaned and I'm actually gonna do this in this video because I had someone ask to do that as well. I don't wanna do a strict video on just a water change on a container because it's pretty simple. But um, it also is very important information. So if you're doing it the wrong way, which is still pretty easy, I don't wanna talk myself up in doing so. But what I have here is just a regular container. I fill it up with um, room temperature. Well, I guess fish room temperature, so heated water that's been uh, dechlorinated. So what I'll do, I have a container, or just a five gallon bucket, and anytime I'm doing water changes, it's typically pretty low from doing water changes on these tubs. I take water from the bucket. By the end of the week, it's ready to be filled up. I'll fill that uh, five gallon up with some dechlorinator. It'll sit in the room. It'll get heated to the same temperature as these containers. And then I can go ahead, drain water from these and add water back straight from that bucket. Um, so we're gonna do it today. But here we have maybe one to two week old fry. And there's a lot of debris and leftover baby brine shrimp that I feed. So we're gonna go through the turkey baster and clean that out. Um, as for the next tub, these guys are probably two weeks older. Um, there's not a whole lot in here, maybe 15 or so, maybe 20. But these guys are getting bigger. They eat pretty well, but there's not huge numbers. I did feed these guys a few hours ago, maybe an hour ago, uh, after I came from work. So I can still see, see if I can zoom in more, some baby brine shrimp swimming around. You see those little orange dots shaking around above the water where it's kind of a white background? More like in this area you can kind of see. Those are all live baby brine shrimp. So you can see I fed this two hours ago and there's still tons of food swimming around. These guys have a constant food source of that baby brine shrimp. So that's my biggest reason why these guys are not in a filtered aquarium. Uh, the benefits of this and I'll keep talking about that as I show my next group. Uh, they're getting older, they're definitely ready for an aquarium. And there's a lot more debris, but they're still doing well. But the benefit to having a sponge filter in a round container that is not see-through, it's white. Uh, the white brings any food in the tank easier for them to spot and find. And it being round, there are no corners. So the debris will settle in the middle typically and it won't get caught in the corners. Uh, there's better circulation from the airstone tumbling. They get good, uh, good oxygen, even though I know oxygen is not just pumping air into a container. That's not really exactly how it works, but it still breaks up the surface area. And these guys have some brine shrimp in there still as well. But to get back to the benefits of doing these in the containers, you don't have a filter sucking up your food. So if you have a sponge filter, you have an aquarium with the hang on filter, it is constantly running and within, depending on the flow rate, or you want to have that water turned over multiple times an hour, that is going to be constantly pulling all the water from the aquarium through the filter back into the tank. And that is in sense sucking up all your food you're trying to feed these fish. So by using the air stone, I'm just moving all the food around and they can still feed on it. The baby brine shrimp I've heard don't live very long in fresh water, but they will live in this water in my experience sometimes for eight hours or so. I'll come home from work and I'll have a, a shorter day. I may work uh, seven to eight hours on a short day and I'll come home and I've done this before and I'll look and I'll still spot those little baby brown shrimp swimming around. So these guys, even though I'm feeding once in the morning, once at night, so people say they need five, six, at least minimal three or four water, uh, excuse me, feedings a day. I'm only doing that twice and I've been doing this for quite some time with a lot of success. And because of that, there is food in the tank, I'm just not constantly adding it because it's not getting taken out. But the only thing about this is you're gonna feed heavy and then the brine shrimp will start to die uh, from days previous, you'll see that on the bottom of the tank and that has to be removed because there's no filter in the aquarium that's gonna be breaking down our water, removing ammonia and breaking the nitrates and in sense having a cycled aquarium. This tank is not cycled, it's just water with an air stone. 
So by me removing that food before it breaks down and turns into ammonia because there's no bacteria to break it down, um, I must remove that and replenish it with fresh water and since keeping a clean bowl container or aquarium per se for these fish to be able to constantly feed, stay healthy and grow to a bit large enough size like these guys and then be moved to aquarium where they can be fed larger foods and the food can stay in the tank and not get sucked up in the filter like your live foods when they're very small. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna put my camera back on the stand. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. I mean, it really is that simple. Uh, I know I've said that breeding these fish are hard because I personally think they are hard. There's a lot of work that goes involved and a lot of research. Um, unless someone told you how to do something or you found out the hard way from trial and error, um, it's not a fish you're just gonna put in a tank and they're gonna breed and you're gonna have babies. There are some tricks along the way, but whenever you know what you're doing and you know why certain things are done a certain way to kind of solve another problem, it's not that that hard. It just be becomes um, consistent uh, schedules and doing the work. I mean, it's not a lot of work, but that extra five, 10 minutes a day to do the live foods, to do that water change, scoop a few cups of water out, add new water. I mean, it's very crucial. So let's go ahead, uh, siphon out these bottoms, add some fresh water, and it's not very complicated, but I will show it because I've had people ask, um, how do I do it? And they kind of want to see it. I mean, I'm a visual learner. I know a lot of people are as well. And I'm not going to take anything away from that because I think that's one of the best ways to learn things and retain information is kind of see it hands on. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to put my camera on the stand. We're going to do about a 50% water change on these. Uh, maybe more, maybe less. And we'll fill them back up, get the air stones back in there and here we go okay so here we go we're gonna do these water changes let me add a few things that you can have that's gonna help this um, a few things I use just a turkey baster a type of a uh, cup or something to scoop water with these clear hang-on containers are nice um, especially when they're really small if you're doing this water change instead of just putting it right into a bucket and throwing it and dumping it out you can put it in there let it settle look through it again make sure you didn't scoop up any babies and that way you can kind of baste them and put them right back in the container. So if you have your turkey baster, you have containers for water, and I have a dirty bucket I'm gonna dump water into, and I have my clean bucket of water. Let's go ahead and do the first one, um, aim the camera down a little bit. It's gonna be hard to show, but I plan on getting them, bring it closer to the camera to kind of get a better view, and um, kind of go from there. So with these first ones, they're all kind of schooling at the top of the water for the focus for us. So sometimes I can actually dump these into a clear container. Um, I'm gonna try that actually. So I'm gonna save some of the water and then they're moving around now. But say I do that, that's about half. I may have got half of the fish as well and there's still a lot of dirty water and there's some fry left. So with this, I can go through and turkey baster out any of the dirty water. Let's see if you guys can see. I know this is, this is really hard to do. Um, with this camera stand I just got, it makes it a lot easier, or at least possible to do. But the brine shrimp will usually clump up. This is kind of fresh, so it's coming out in uh, larger clumps, or just like sitting there. Uh, the second container, I can tell it'll come out easier, but I'm really just going through them, looking at it, and if I see I suck up a fish, sometimes they'll swim right back out. If you pause, give a little pump backwards, they'll swim out, uh, especially if they're healthy. This is an easy way to call any real weak fry, um, and that one I can tell I didn't get any fry, so I'll just put that in the dirty bucket. Um, I'll keep going through and just taking my time going around the fry getting the clumps of uh, old food. Pretty simple. I'll get that all out. And having extra containers is really nice because I can go ahead when I'm real close to it done, dump them all into a fresh container. I'll wipe this out clean when there's uh, no fish or water left. And then I'll actually do my next water change into this. So you don't have to worry about being too perfect and sterile. And right there, I actually got a fish, but I watched him, he swam back out. When they're really young, you can go ahead 
and dump them through a net and that'll catch some debris which isn't good but it'll catch all of your fry and then you can give them all fresh water dumping the fish back into a clean container um, some of the debris and old food will go in as well but you're still doing like 100% water change I don't recommend doing that the first time you do the water change with a new fry um, if they just if it's your first water change on the fry ever and they've been in there for about a week they hatch there's leftover eggs there's food for the first time you don't want to do the first water change to be 100% so you can condition your fish to a percentage of water change you're comfortable with so if you do this every day you can do 100% or so uh, maybe 50% the first few days and work your way up to 100% just like a normal aquarium but uh, if you're going to do it every two or three days you're just going to get the brie out skim some water give them some fresh stuff uh, a little bit of common sense there fish don't like rapid changes so if I'm going to go ahead and wait two weeks and then the fryer is still alive I do a huge water change, water is clean you might lose that whole batch of fry from doing so. so that's just too much all at once and it's uh, not consistent, it's not gradual um, these guys are still really young, it's hard to do the water change so I have these guys left here I'm going to go ahead and leave this as is and what I'll do is I'll finish my water change on this container I've been putting it in so not trying to suck up fry, I can look now. I probably have maybe six fry, no, probably more, I have like 10 fry in here. Uh, a lot of live food as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and look at it. I'm just gonna dump as much water out as I can into this bucket and just, I'll push them away from the edge. I'll pick different corners so I can kind of watch. Fry's getting close there, I'll move over here start dumping it. I can even suck up a fry right there. There's only one, the rest of them are away. Now I'll put them back into the other side. They're kind of getting tossed around, but I've been doing this and it really works. If you guys slow, they will swim away, especially the order they get. Those big guys, I can do this so almost look for the whole water change. So I just did pretty much 100% water change on the water change, I guess you could say. Uh, I'll get a base of clean water. I'll dump them back into their container and I'll rinse them out at the same time. So that way they don't get stuck in there. So now this is emptied. They're back in their original, original tank right here. So I probably have about 30% of the water left. And now I'll just top this off. I know there's a lot of lights, so it's not uh, focusing much. But now I've done a water change. I've removed a lot of water, and now I can just top this off. I can simply dip it, dip it into my bucket, fill a focus force, and fill it up. I can take one of these fresh containers and take a big scoop of clean water. Just simply top it off. And I know I move them around a lot, but this is how their water changes are done. And it's all they really know because it's happened since they were babies. And now the water looks a lot cleaner. I've got a lot of debris out. It's not perfect, but they're still really young that I can't do too much and they're just so small. It's a good time to look for any um, fish that didn't make it. I saw one there was kind of just floating around. Uh, probably one of the weaker ones. And then here I can see any like larger bits of debris. I can just slowly go and get it. Put it in my bucket. If you want to, you kind of swirl the tank. The fish will usually stabilize and school and the debris will keep going. So I can take my turkey baser, go straight down and I'll just go right here in the corner and it'll float around and come to my turkey baser and I'll suck it up as it comes by. But this one's about done. Let's go ahead and do the next one. I think it's a lot easier. That was probably our hardest one. So it was our youngest and smallest fry and there was more in there this second one should be super easy to do so watch this as the brine shrimp dies and it's actually starting to almost cause ammonia because it's breaking down watch how this happens i'll start sucking up i almost push along the bottom 
it'll clump up and I get a big clump right there. So this is actually really easy to clean. So whenever you're cleaning less frequently, it's actually easier. You just can't do it as a um, large percentage because right there, that is the meat of that water change. So if I do that in the morning, maybe just dump off some of the water to the side where there's no fry, top it off, I'm good to go and I'm actually gonna do that. So I did one turkey baster out of there and I got maybe a dozen fry in there. I'll go ahead where they're not schooling up on the opposite side, dump out some of that water. So now there's some algae in there, there's some leftover food, but it's not as much as those big clumps. And then I'll go ahead and just top it off, use what I have left there, I probably need a little bit more water. is adding fresh, same temperature to chlorinated tap water right in there. And you can see the bottom's much cleaner, the fish are good. Uh, any floating debris is very small, I don't see any huge clumps. If I wanted to take my time and go through and clean all those little bits, I really can. But I'll be doing the same thing in the next day or two again, so it's not a big deal. And I hope this is picking up on camera, I'm kind of looking down a lot. Uh, these guys are larger. They get fed much more because they eat a lot more. Uh, you don't want a lot of food to be left over. You'll actually get some of these eggs, which aren't bad, but they'll sit at the top. I like to personally get those before I start draining this one, because once you uh, stir it up, you're not gonna be able to get them. So I'll skim the top, take those out of there. Put in my dirty bucket. You can see my buckets are white, which is helpful. It's not a must. But that way I can, I can go back and really double check or triple check myself. If I did pick up any fry, I can suck them back up and put them back into the tub. Um, it's not a dirty bucket already. It starts as an empty bucket and I fill it with water at the end of the day. At the end of the water change, I'll just dump that down the, uh, down the drain, rinse it out with uh, water with a cup and I'll put it right back here, it'll air dry and it'll be ready for use again. But these guys are pretty easy to get. I actually have some pellet food in there, so I want them to start eating more solid foods. I will introduce uh, flake food at an early age. Even if they're not eating it, I'll crush it up small because uh, they'll feed off the surface area a lot when they're schooling up and they're babies. And it really introduces them to new food. They can smell that food in the water and they know when it's feeding time, so that kind of slowly introduces them from, I see live food, I know I'm hungry, I know I'm eating, to kind of like, what's that smell? Um, and they start trying that as well. So this is pretty much done. I'm gonna dump out about 80% of this, top it off. If I had an extra container or I had more time right now and I wasn't on film, I would dump these into a different container, a clear one, with some of their water, saving some of their water, wipe this out clean, Actually, you know what, let's do that. I don't want to be lazy. Uh, if you want to, you can do this over a net, but I'm gonna go, if I see any, I'll push them back. Got these there. I have a little bit of clean water. Let's go ahead, dump them in. There's none left, they're in the new container, right in here with some of their old water, some fresh. And now I can go ahead and wipe this out clean. As you get some uh, clean water, you can kind of just clean it with your hand. I usually use a sponge, but I don't want to walk and get it. Or you can uh, get a paper towel, which I actually don't have in the room, so I'm not gonna do it. It's kind of last minute. I didn't really plan doing a water change on this, but I had someone ask in the comments just the other day, and I did want to show these fry in this video. So that's pretty clean. Make it brand new. Let's get a towel because it's not a lot of uh, algae there. So it's not like I need a paper towel to throw away. I got a brand new container. Let's go ahead and get about half of it full of water. And then we are going to re-add our rams. And these guys are probably three weeks old. They definitely can go in an aquarium. I'm low on space, but they're gonna go out shortly. I just 
I plan on selling a large group from my tank number one, and then I'll move the babies from a 10 to a 29 or 55. These guys will go to a 10, and that process is just keeps going. Uh, very important if you want to breed a fish, and a lot of people can be a one-hit wonder, breed a fish one time to adult size, which still isn't easy, and then go ahead and sell them. I'll raise this up, I'll talk to you guys. So, that's pretty much it for the water changes. I know it kind of looks a little bit almost old school. There's not a whole lot going on, but if it works, it works. So, but what I was getting at with that last comment is to breed a fish. Sorry, battery's running low. To breed a fish is hard, but it's not the hardest thing ever. To breed a fish weeks or weeks after week, month after month, have fish in all different sizes. It is, I mean, it's time and it's consuming. It's kind of challenging. So that's pretty much what it takes. You gotta organize your fish. You gotta have babies behind babies. If you wanna sell them to customers, you wanna not run out of stock. You wanna have a store call you and say, hey, we need 50 of those rams again. They sold quick, we're ready to go. You gotta have them. And then if you sell them, you're like, okay, I'll breed them again. I'll have babies in three months. It's not consistent. They're gonna find any rams elsewhere. They're not the rarest fish ever, but they are a good seller. They're a good looking fish. They're not that expensive. So they're one of my favorite fish to breed. Um, that and guppies. Plecos are starting to get up there too because I've started to kind of create some really cool strains, at least in my eyes. Uh, but that's pretty much it. I'm gonna wrap this video up. Let me go ahead and show you all my stages of rams just because we're talking about it. I'll do it in 20 seconds. And I'm gonna add a clip I shot out of my super red bristlenose plecos feeding the other day. There's a whole swarm of them. I know and they showed you like two in that tank. I have like six of them. But you can go ahead and take a closer look at those and what they look like. Thanks for watching guys. Uh, let's look at the rams real quick and then I'll post a video from the other week of them feeding. And thanks again guys. I really appreciate all the views and subscribers. Uh, check out my website, like I said, Bianco School of Fish. And uh, enjoy your fish, enjoy your fish room. Uh, stay tuned for more stuff. Quick walkthrough of the rams. We got some one week old rams. We got some two week old rams. We have some three to four week old German blue rams. We have some month and a half to two month old rams. A step backwards, these are probably two month old rams to month and a half. There's a lot in this 10 gallon. We have some three to four month old, um, ready to sell and breed or keep in a community tank or school. Uh, adults coloring up or colored up per se. And kind of the same thing. We have some three to four month old rams all in a nice sale tank. I will be selecting a few of these for future breeders. Cause like I said, you wanna have babies behind babies same thing, you don't want your um, breeders getting too old and um, stop producing for you. The young ones around three to six months old are the most, pro most prolific and they bounce back the best when, with breeding. There's a nice uh, pair actually starting to form. I guarantee if I pulled those out, I'd probably get some babies. Um, female, more conditioned, she's got a bigger belly on her. And there's a nice male getting the longer fins on them. But I'm not gonna go too in depth on that. I know I have a lot of German Blue Ram videos out there. You can check those out. I'm sure I'll have more to come. I'm um, gonna just toss in that last link of the Plecos. So thanks again for watching. It all started with uh, tank number five today and tank number six will be next. Stay tuned for that and check out these Plecos. Thanks for watching guys.